Welcome back to another episode of Psychosmos. Thank you for joining me. My name is Coach Matt. I am a certified professional master spiritual life coach. And what I do is I help people use a lot of different mythology, scriptures, esoteric philosophies, and make it super practical so that people can live their best lives. Uh, so one of the things I want to talk about today is I want to answer some of the questions on some of the videos that we've been having. And I want to break that down so that everybody can have some better details. If you're interested in working with me, unfortunately, I am all right up right now i will not be free until probably july if you'd like to inquire get on a wait list please feel free to email us you can go to our website and check out all the information that we have there but one of the questions uh that we got or actually we got a, a number of questions one question that we got from our videos asking for more questions and for for answers to be able to answer your questions what are uh, good ways to work on blockages and how does one know whether one is in the clear to do sacred secretion related things really great question because when it comes to sacred secretion you never really want to just dive right into it this is something that takes a lot of preparation you also want to ensure you're not conflating what sacred secretion is and what a kundalini activation is sacred secretion or the christos oil uh, is the process, the anatomical autonomic process within the human body that occurs once in every month. For men, this is going to occur when the moon enters the sign that the sun was in when they were born. So if you, <clears throat> if you don't know a lot about uh, the zodiac, and let's say you were born in April and you say, I'm an Aries, whenever the moon enters Aries, that is when you are going to want to focus on doing your processes and actually you kind of want to do it even a little bit before that and a little bit after that if you're a woman this process is mainly going to be taking place during ovulation so there's actually going to be another video that i'm going to be doing today completely on that it's a lot of really fascinating things but for the female body specifically ovulation and menstruation uh, are the actual focal points of the sacred secretion process for them, specifically during ovulation when the ovum is released. That is akin to the seminal fluid that the male body would use in order to reactivate this uh, process within the body. And really what the sacred secretion process is, is just a healing process, a very subtle healing process that the body undergoes every month to keep the body going. A kundalini activation is using your neurology and reflexology to stimulate parts and chemicals of the body in order to uh, have a more light-based, neurological-based awakening. When you align these two things, like the sun and the moon coming together like an eclipse, that is where you will reach a higher form of um, conscious enlightenment. So make sure that, one, you, for the kundalini aspect of it, you want to ensure that your neurological body is cleared. So a lot of ways that you can work on blockages from more of that sense is to dive into your emotional traumas and let go of a lot of those things. Start doing yoga. Start uh, going for massage or physical therapy work. Talk to a doctor about that if you're not comfortable. And things of that nature. It's things that would kind of clear energy through the body. And then from the anatomical automatonic process of the sacred secretion, we're talking more things like uh, meditation, prayer, uh, eating healthy, making sure that you're drinking proper, you know, good water, alkalizing your body during those t specific times of every single month, and then ensuring that you're avoiding lower frequency vibrational um, uh, blockages that might like pop up, any form of resistances. Once you can align these two faculties, that is where you can start undergoing the sacred secretion process and working on yourself to a much deeper way. But sacred secretion is more of like a, it's not a beginner's thing. This is something that you should really be, really be careful of and make sure that you're ready for. And if you're not called for it yet, which is probably the vast majority of people on the face of the planet, which is why not a lot of people know about this. If you're not called for it, nine times out of 10, uh, you're probably not ready for it yet, and that's okay. You're not supposed to just be ready for this. This is something you have to build up towards, so take your time. It's not a big rush. It's not a big deal. Um, one of the reasons that we don't offer some sort of a course or anything on this yet is because we're still in the discovery phase of a lot of details and information that have to deal with this process. And in fact, there are a lot of people out there who are claiming that they know everything about this, and they don't. They don't even know that there's a difference between male and female cycles. Um, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't know a lot of things. So just wanted to put that out there and just say, 
thank you for everybody who supports us and who is working with us. If you are a woman, uh, highly advise that you steer clear of the people who are saying it's when the moon enters your sun sign. That is not true. You are you are doing a kundalini activation and activating your neurology, which is still great, but the timing is still off. And this is why a lot of women feel as though they are being failed by this old masculine dominated system, which came out of a bunch of secret societies. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot that goes into this. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely work on those blockages first before you start practicing sacred secretion. Another question I got is, what if a woman is in menopause? Does not matter, and this is why, because there's um, some theories that are showcasing that whether the woman releases an egg from the fallopian tubes or not into the body is irrelevant in the process that the body undergoes to use the nutrients of the egg. So I'm still looking for some information on this, but there's a, my theory is basically that as women get older after menopause occurs, the egg does not need to be on the exterior of the uh, ovaries because it doesn't, it, there's no longer a need or even a physical ability to be able to house a child. However, the ovum still is going to get recycled through the ovaries. Uh, and that is actually the whole point of what the sacred secretion cycle occurs for in women. So any type of practices that you've seen f that are recommended during sacred secretion, try those during your ovulation phase because what's going to happen is the ovum is going to release the egg. It is going to, uh, and then you are going to use the nutrients of that egg that does not get implanted or, uh, or you know, inseminated, I guess, from a standpoint of making a child, you're going to, you're going to redistribute the energy and nutrients of that egg back into your body. And that's something that I think is very important for women to do. If you've hit menopause, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have this cycle because the proof of this would be if you were a woman and you hit menopause, you would die. You, do you age faster after menopause? Yes. And that's probably because there's not a lot of consistency for the women keeping track of their ovulation and menstruation because there's no need. They're not menstruating anymore. Ovulation isn't really occurring, but there are still time signatures where if you can go back and you can maybe figure out when that ovulation phase occurs, then that would work for you. If that does not work, look into the phase of the moon that you were born in. This is the Dr. Eugene Yonash fertility method. And nine times, well, maybe more so, seven times out of ten, you will align with the phase of the moon that you were born in. Or you will sync up with like a husband, a spouse, a partner, um, you know, your family. Your, it could even potentially be your, your kids. If you're a single m mother and you have a daughter who is on a fertility cycle, you might start syncing up with her. There's a lot of data that shows that women have that ability to do that. So um, my recommendation would be try to find... Even if you're in menopause, try to find where you believe your menstruation and your ovulation times would be occurring and try to align it because there's a, there's a potentiality for an ability for you to still harness the power of some of those eggs that you have in your ovaries, which would kind of make sense seeing as how you're, you're kind of born with those. So the women are born with this, the, the seeds from birth and the men are constantly creating the seeds. Um, so they both will have them throughout the longevity of their life. So that's just my recommendation there. Who exactly is O-A-W-N-M-B-S? One about whom not or shall not be named, I think is, is it might it might have been misspelled, but either way, yeah. This is a theosophistic uh, theory where basically we are living within a cosmic body of sorts. Um, it's a theory that's actually, that actually goes in line with a lot of um, older uh, Hebraic teachings, especially Zaharian teachings. Um, it is, it's a theory that the theosophists have, and it's been uh, I guess pushed to its limits. So just keep that in mind. Basically, they believe that we, we are living in a body. We're basically almost like cells in the body of God, if you want to think of it that way. But it's actually a smaller version of a, it's a small, it's smaller than God, but it's bigger than us. So it's kind of like a middle barrier that the entire universe is a body in and of itself. And we exist somewhere in that body. And then that body exists within God. That's basically, the, I'm, I'm only going to go into the basics of that because it's a very deep theory. And then finally, on the last question, 
If our main goal is to merge with the higher self, which requires non-attachment, then how would manifesting fit into everything harmoniously without becoming attached to results or desires? Great question here. Manifestation is not about the attachment of results and desires. In fact, it is that attachment which will often make it so that you do not get or manifest the thing that you so desire. This manifestation comes down to knowing yourself and understanding the harmonization between energy within the body as well as how it works outside of your body so that you can bring th ideas that resonate authentically from higher spheres of influence and consciousness down into the physical and then use them as tools and use your action with your 3d physical body to then send positive energy by healing other people and helping other people and serving other people down here up into the higher stratospheres and then it just yo-yos basically the more that you do good works the more you're sending positive energy down up there the more you'll be able to pull energy from the ether back down into your physical body this is why uh you'll notice with success with people it's exponential uh, because it's it's not like it's not like one for one like a you know like a line on a chart like a diagonal line it's exponential and it's also uh, a stock ticker uh, kind of as well so it, it kind of like starts here and it goes like this and then it's going like this but but over time as you get older it's just like wealth wealth accumulation the money that you had at 50 is dramatically more than the money that you're gonna have at 20 that's that's just the the it's the concept of energy and value so wanted to get those questions out of the way as always we love you guys so very much i will not be available to be worked with until probably like early july so i i will be very off limits um if you do order a natal chart reading or anything like that just please understand that it will be backlogged i do have a lot of things that i have to get through but i'm actually really really loving and appreciating all of my wonderful people that i've been working with and i love every single one of you guys so sorry that we can't focus on making more videos we really are just strapped for time and we don't have all the energy or the time in the world to be able to make all these videos all the time but we still really appreciate every single one of you guys watching uh, thank you so much for all of the wonderful support that we get from you. Much love and many blessings and take care. We'll see you in the next one.